welcome back to my channel. This I think is, could be wrong, I think it, this is number eight in the series of tectonic hazards and processes. Today we're moving on to inquiry question three. The question is, how successful is the management of tectonic hazards and disasters? And we're going to focus on geopolitical disaster trends and hazard profiles. If this is the first video of mine you're seeing, hi, I'm Lara. I make YouTube videos on geographical issues on lifestyle kind of vlog content. If you haven't subscribed, please do down below. Hit the notification bell if you would like to be notified every time I upload a video. It would really help me out and I'm trying to hit the goal of a thousand subscribers by December and I'd really appreciate if you could help me out with that. Without further ado, let's get into this video. Earth scientists believe that improvements in monitoring and recording events may be contributing to the rising trend in reported events. Improvements in communication technology means that more news is reported, so we are hearing about more tectonic activity, more volcanic eruptions, more earthquakes, etc. There's a rising population also. More people occupy hazardous spaces. Therefore, we are more aware of storm flood events taking place because people are now building and living on floodplains, whereas before they may have not done. More of the world is now covered with concrete and impermeable materials. This means that water does no longer sink into the soil as it used to, but it just flows over the top. There is an increased flooding risk because of this. A country's level of economic development can influence the number of people killed by a disaster, but also its financial cost. The number of people being killed by disasters globally is falling. Better warning systems, improved building codes and disaster preparedness has helped to reduce the overall death toll. However, in between 1994 and 2013, the average number of people dying per disaster was three times higher in low income countries than in high income countries. Despite the falling overall death toll, the financial cost to disasters is rising. Receiving accurate information about the frequency and impact of disasters is important for governments, international organisations and aid agencies. When a disaster strikes, the immediate focus is on rescue and aid, not collecting data. No single organisation is responsible for collecting data and because of this, methods vary, so are often incomparable. There are differences in the definitions of some key terms and categories used. To gather data from remote areas is actually difficult because there is often a lack of access to the major cities where people are often based if they are researching. There is often an underreporting of deaths because of this and same with damage, it's not reported in the same way. But actually these places are the most in need of help for disaster planning. Hazard profiles. Here is a diagram showing the main characteristics of different types of tectonic hazards. It can be developed for a single hazard or multiple hazards and it allows comparisons to be made. It helps governments and other organisations to develop disaster plans. It is broken down into six categories. Magnitude, speed of onset, duration, aerial extent, spatial predictability and frequency. So as you can see here, we have two different hazard profiles. We have the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami, which we touched on in our last video, and the Kilauea eruption. These are virtually opposite eruptions based on this. The red line is the Indian Ocean tsunami and the blue line is the Kilauea eruption. Hazard profiles do help governments and other organisations develop disaster plans. For example, this profile shows the red line the 2004 Indian Ocean Tsunami. It shows a high magnitude, a rapid onset and widespread extent. Organisations can use this information to plan for the future disasters, which might focus on making sure early warning systems reach all countries that might be affected. However, the disaster plan for the ongoing eruption in Kilauea, the blue line, is probably very different. The small magnitude and limited extent might lead the Hawaiian government to focus more on efforts developing evacuation plans for its population living close to the volcano. So this is just an example of how hazard profiles can help people, help governments, help organisations to kind of plan for the future. That is a short and sweet introduction and summary of geopolitical trends and hazard profiles. So I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something. 
If you want to see more from me, subscribe down below. There'll be a playlist linked in the end card, so just click on that and that'll show you the rest of my geography videos in this series. I will see you same time, same place next week, 4.30 on Monday for the next instalment of this series, which is all about multiple hazard zones. So I will see you then. Thank you.